Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk more about the on-click event, when and how different Microsoft Access on-click events fire. There's a form click, a section click, a combo box click, a, a label click. There's all kinds of different clicks, and some of them are confusing. So in this video, I'm going to try to explain them. In my previous Tech Help video, on click, we created a couple of little labels down here, right, where you can click minus one or plus one, and the on click event for that label would increase or decrease the date in the customer sense field by whatever interval you picked here, date, week, month, and so on. So that's using the on click event in a label, which is pretty straightforward. Now you can also put an on click event in the field itself. For example, the text box here, we can do the same thing. So right click design view let's go to the customer sense field i'm going to double click on it bring up its property sheet here's the on click event on the events tab i'll go to the builder button right there that'll bring up my visual basic editor and you can do the same thing in here you could say customer sense equals customer sense plus one so every time you click on that field it'll add one date whether that's useful or not that's up to you <laughs> all right let's close that close this save it open it back up again and now every time I click here it's going to increase the value by one day see that pretty straightforward buttons work the same way the on click event for a button can open up another form for example combo boxes are a little trickier these guys right here what you might think happens is when you click on the combo box that event runs but that's not the case the on click event doesn't run until you actually pick a value it's kind of weird you'd think that would just be the after update event but that's not how it works so let's go into here the customer combo box right here go to events all right on click i'm just going to put in here message box click okay and let's see what happens open it up click we didn't get anything, see? That's, you'd think that would, that would fire the click event, but no. Now it fires when you pick a value. So if you want something to happen when you click on a combo box just to open it up, use the got focus event. Got focus happens whenever you move to that field. All right, go to events and use got focus right here. There's also the on enter and exit events too. Those are slightly different, but that's a topic for a different video. I like to use on got focus. So right here, we'll say message box got focus. And now you'll see how the two work. You want to play with the timings, by the way, just use this little trick, right? Just message box it. All right, so click, there's the on got focus event. All right, and now when the box is open, pick a value and there's the click event. Subforms do use that on enter and on exit events. They don't have an on got focus event. Now remember to get the subform, you gotta click on the border of it right there. See there's a border. That's the subform object. It's a subform control on the parent form. Okay? Not clicking in here. Now now we're on the product name text box, which is part of the subform. All right, I want to give it right there. So the outer subform is selected. And if I double click, you'll see it says subform up here. On the events, you got enter and exit. Enter is when you enter the subform, any control on it, and exits when you leave. And you can see how that timing works here. All right, message box, subform, enter. And watch this, drop this guy down here. All right, instead of going back out there, drop this down, go to exit. And now it created the exit event, message box, subform, exit. And these are fired by the parent form. Okay, so come back out here. All right, the parent form handles those. So if I'm up here, right, and I click down here anywhere, I got the subform enter event, and now I'm in the subform. Control's been handed off. And if I leave that subform and come back up here, subform exit runs. And you can use those for all kinds of things to make calculations and stuff when you change things and then leave that subform, all kinds of stuff. Okay, now here comes the tricky one. You ready? If you look at a forms properties, right, here's the form itself. There's an on-click event for the form. Okay, let's see when that fires. Come in here, same thing, message box, form on click. All right, save that. And let's come back over here, close it, and open it back up again. Okay, now I'm clicking on any of these objects. The event isn't firing. If I click out here in the empty area, that event doesn't fire. How about the title bar? No, move from record to record. No, that's the on-current event. 
All right, what do I got to do? The form on current event, or the, excuse me, the form click event runs when you click on the record selector. It's weird, I know, but that's what it does. So anytime someone selects the entire record, the form click event runs. Okay? That's not one that I think I've ever really used in a production setting, but <laughs> that's, that's what it is. If you want an event to run here when someone clicks on the background of the form, that's going to be the detail sections on click event. Okay, so come over here, message box, detail on click, save it. And here we go. Ready? All right, click out here. See, detail on click. If you click on any of these objects, you get the objects on click event. If you click in a blank space on the form, you get the detail sections on click event. This is the forms on click event. And if you have header sections, all right, if you uh, come out here and go, whoops, wrong spot, come down here <laughs> and go to form header footer. We don't use page header footer, people, right? Remember, page header footer is for printing. We don't print forms. We print reports. Okay, so we're not going to use that. We're going to use the form header footer. There's the form header. And again, the header and footer sections have their own on-click events right there. I'll just do the form header. Message box, form header, click. I don't know what you'd use this for, but if you want to, it's there. I've used it in the past a couple times, right? Form header, click. There you go. One quick thing I would like to point out on Microsoft's page, if you go to the form click event and you scroll down, it says right here on a form, this event occurs when the user clicks on a blank area or record selector. That's not correct. Blank area does not work. That's the detail sections click event. Right, only the record selector event fires for the form properties. So there you go. There's your on-click event timing fast tips video. Hope you learned something. We'll see you again tomorrow. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the Show More link down below the video to find additional resources and links You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? 
visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.